All right, welcome to video number two of the Flatbed Dealer Program demo series. This video is gonna cover setting your selling prices and profit margins using our pre-made Excel sheet that I'm gonna walk you through how to use. The great part about this model is that you as the dealer get to set your selling prices based on your cost of labor, materials, powder coat, all the other inputs that actually go into building the bed. This Excel sheet I'm about to cover goes into that. Basically, you load your local cost of steel, powder coat, labor into the Excel sheet. Once you load that in there, you can set your profit margin, whatever you think is appropriate. Generally, we recommend somewhere in the 25 to 45% range. It's preset at 35%, which is a great place to start. But once you do that, it's gonna instantaneously generate your prices, which is going to be your prices and margins for what you're gonna be selling it for. I'm gonna get into actually how to download and fill out the Excel sheet. So the reason this is important is we wanna benchmark these prices against your local market in your area, because if your beds are twice as expensive as the other option in town, obviously this isn't gonna work for you. But if it is competitive, even below kind of the rest of the market, the numbers are gonna tell us that, and then we can get a very good estimation of how successful this is gonna be based off the numbers. We're gonna get into the Excel sheet now, and then we'll generate your prices for you. You guys should be on this dealer demo page, same as you're seeing on my screen here, just follow step by step. I'm gonna go down to the due diligence links, which by the way, you should look through all of these in detail. They're gonna be very helpful for you and also the FAQs as well. But in this case, I'm gonna click flatbed Excel sheet, which is gonna set your selling prices and profit margins. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna open it up in a new tab. So it should open it up in a new tab. You should be seeing something like this. First thing we're gonna do is download it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to file and then I'm going to click download. If you have Microsoft Excel, you'll click the Microsoft Excel, and when you click that, it'll download it as an Excel file. If you don't have Microsoft Excel, if you have a Gmail account, you can click this button here, save as Google Sheets, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna save this as a Google Sheets file to your Google Drive. So uh, this basically just made a copy of it. You can now fill this out as you see fit. I'm gonna show you how to fill this out. This is the second thing. And so we got three pages. We got the master cost list. I'm down here in the bottom left, flatbed add-on and prices, and then pricing calculations. So if this looks confusing and crazy, don't worry. You don't have to be a genius if you've never used a computer before. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this with zero computer experience. So the master cost list is the only page that we need to edit. Don't touch anything on the flatbed add-on prices and pricing calculations because those are linked to the master cost list. So when we change numbers on the master cost list, it automatically updates the flatbed and add-on prices. So first thing you're gonna do is there's a link right here that says download PDF steel list to send a supplier for quote. So if we click on that, it's gonna open up this list. And this basically is the steel that you're gonna need that goes into the flatbed. So just download this, email it, or deliver it by hand to your steel supplier. And we need them to fill out the price per unit row based on all of these steel items. Once you have that, which that should be a pretty quick and easy job, this is all pretty much stuff that any decent sized metal supplier is gonna have in stock. Once you get that list back, you need to go through this list here and replace these numbers with what your steel supplier quotes. These numbers that are already loaded in here are real numbers from our shop. Um, they might not be up to date by the time you're watching this video, but these are real actual numbers for what we're paying for steel. If it's anywhere close to the time where this video is recorded, it'll be a good benchmark. If you can come in below this, that's great. Take the numbers from the steel price, load them in here. What that's gonna do is it's gonna calculate your selling prices of your flatbeds. So the steel types over here, load the prices in there. That's all that needs done on the steel cost section, which is this section here. We're gonna then scroll down to labor cost, this section right here. The only cell that needs edited, like I said, the green ones are the only ones that need edited in this case. Don't touch anything else because they're all formulated. This is where you put your average cost of your employee labor. Now don't confuse this with your shop rate. If you charge $150 an hour for your shop rate, that's not the number that goes here. What we're looking for here is what's your average hourly rate you pay your employees. Do you pay them 25 an hour? Do you pay them 30 an hour? Do you pay them 18 an hour? Whatever that average number is, that's what goes in here. And then it's gonna apply an overhead rate for our three different types of labor that's actually costed into the flatbed. Whereas the fabrication hourly cost, it adds $15 to your hourly rate to account for consumables, wear and tear. This is install and wiring labor. This is a lower rate because you're not burning up grinder discs and wire and welding gas. So you're costing it at a lower rate. And then lastly, we have our CNC hourly cost. You know, that's an expensive item, the CNC table that we're wearing out. So that is basically adds $35 an hour to whatever your base rate is and costs any CNC labor at this rate. 
That's how that works. Again, just only put it in this green cell here, not your job rate, like what is the actual hourly rate you pay your labor for your employees because this, it's gonna take this number and it's gonna, on top of that, apply a profit margin. So it's not like we're giving our labor away. That's not something you need to worry about. That's all been factored in. Next thing is your powder coat and paint cost. So this is the next section that you need filled out. So you need to go to your local powder coat supplier. If you're doing powder coat in-house, that's best case scenario. Um, this, again, these are real numbers. This is what we're paying today for powder coating from our powder coater. So a base model, what does that cost to get powder coated? That number goes here. Keep in mind, a base model is open frame. So we're assuming that's either wood or Trex deck. Steel deck is an add-on that you'll see in row 43. So don't go to your powder coater and let them think that this is a steel deck. Like what's the cost of a flatbed if it has an open frame going to be, you need to get that cost. If you don't know an exact cost, that's fine. We just need to be fairly close. And then what's it cost to get a pair of toolboxes, fender, side rail, steel deck, a three feet of added length for cabin chassis, and then a lumber rack. We need to get these numbers from your supplier. Now, one thing quickly here on paint is a lot of times this is regional on what guys think is the best option. If you're in the Northeast or the Rust Belt where they salt the roads a lot and whatnot, some think it's a better option to do epoxy or some sort of other coating besides powder coat that holds up better. We are not strict on whether you do powder coating or paint or epoxy, but what we are strict on is that it has to be professional. So powder coat isn't a feasible option for you. In most places, it's gonna be the best option, but if you feel like there's a better option, just load the prices, whatever they're gonna be for the base model and the add-ons into this section because we need to know what your finish cost is gonna be. Lastly, this here, so you only need to fill out this section if you don't have a CNC in-house. If you got your own CNC table, you can just ignore this section. But if you don't have a CNC table and you're planning on outsourcing this to a local CNC shop, you need to see what it's gonna cost to cut each thing. So we kind of have a description here of how much material it's gonna be, the type of material and how long it takes to cut. Using those, that info, you should be able to get a fairly quote, close quote from your CNC cutter on what it's gonna cost for, for example, an SRW base set of parts, a dually base set of parts, um, a set of fenders, and then the light brackets and fuel plate out of 12 gauge. So get a quote for that if you're outsourcing the CNC cutting. These gray boxes here, you'll see gray boxes over here and then these ones here. If it's gray, it means it needs verified, but probably not changed. Green means it needs changed with your actual pricing. Gray means it needs verified. So this option is only gonna be needed to be filled out by you if you're planning on buying the CNC parts from headquarters, which is likely gonna be very few of you guys. But this is basically the price to buy a base set of parts from headquarters, dually, cost of fenders. The reason ours are more expensive than what you're likely gonna pay here is because we have shipping costs involved, whereas if you buy it locally, they're basically just charging you for labor and material, no shipping. So in most cases, it's gonna be cheaper to outsource it uh, than it is to buy it from us. Obviously do whatever makes you the most money. So whatever option is cheaper, that's what you should do. These here are basically other items you're gonna need that we don't source, but we have linked on the dealer um, platform that you're, you're gonna have to buy, like deck screws, fuel hose, that kind of stuff. These are live prices, but these are all linked. So make sure you click on each link and verify that the cost that we have in here is the actual cost of what it is. Because you know, by the time you're watching this video, it might be a year after we recorded this, these prices will likely have changed. So make sure you, we'll kind of try and keep it as up to date as we can, but make sure, for example, the toolboxes, we have $268.99 put in there. You wanna go ahead and click on that and verify that that's the actual price. See right there, $268.99 is the actual price but if you're in a different location, this is down the road in the future, that might be different. So just make sure these are all correct. Then the last thing is enter your desired profit margin. 35% is a good place to start. Our dealers range anywhere from 25 to 45%. I definitely would not recommend trying to start at a 45% because pigs get flat and hogs get slaughtered. You got no credibility. You wanna start at a very reasonable price. So 35%, generally speaking, is a very reasonable place to, place to start. So once you got your steel costs loaded in, you got your labor rate loaded in there. You got your powder coat or finish cost loaded in there. And if you're outsourcing the cutting, you got that done. And then you verified all these numbers. What you're gonna do is you can tab over to page two, which is flatbed and add-on prices. This is already automatically generated all of your selling prices. So it takes the prices you put in, in your steel and your other inputs. It does the calculations based on your profit margin, which in this case is 35% and it lists all the different prices for the base price, install charge, and price installed for the long beds, cab chassis, 
of varying lengths. The way this works is this is your standard model prices for in-house CNC cutting. So if you're doing in-house CNC cutting, that's what you look at. These are the full skirted prices if you do in-house CNC cutting. If you're, do, if you're outsourcing your CNC cutting, then you would use these two lists as your selling price. And then lastly, if you're buying the headquarter, the CNC parts from headquarters, you would use these two lists for your selling prices. That's what it's gonna come out to be. And then last thing here is we have your add-on prices. So what's a, a pair of toolboxes gonna sell for at a 35% margin? Short bed toolboxes at a 35% margin, et cetera, down the list. And then third thing here is this column is it in-house CNC cutting. This column is locally sourced CNC cutting. And this column is headquarters shop CNC. You're buying the fenders from headquarters basically. So the only thing that changes there, as you can see, is the fenders because that's the only CNC cut add-on basically. Everything else is gonna be the same. That is your selling prices. So really important number to look at. Let's say you're doing in-house CNC cutting, which is gonna be most of you. We wanna know what this price is right here. What's, what's like the starting price for a wood deck installed 5413 according to these numbers. Now step two of this is let's benchmark that against the rest of your market. So if there is four dealers that sell flatbeds in the area, we need to know exactly what's your most basic flatbed cost installed. And make sure you ask for the install price because most of these people hook you with a really low price and then they add $1,800 for install. So by the time you actually do the math on it, it's actually generally speaking more expensive than what you're gonna sell them for. So this is kind of your starting price and it goes on down based on the model. That's the price that we're looking at of like, is this gonna work from an economic perspective? So that's how the selling prices work. And this is very simple. Once you actually become a dealer, let's say your price of steel changes. You're gonna have a copy of this Excel sheet. Let's say our price of 3 16 P and L goes from 226 to 274. We're gonna put that in there. And that has just upped all of our prices to what it needs to be to keep our 35% margin when you factor in the new cost of 3 16 plate. Or if labor goes up, let's say it goes up to 30, that just upped all of our prices to what we need to sell these for to retain our 35% margin. Or last scenario here is, you know, we're selling a ton of these, they're flying off the shelf. Let's up our margin to 40%. We crank the margin up right there. Boom, just upped all of our prices instantaneously to reflect a 40% margin on the base prices and all of the add-ons. We got a handy little graph that goes over basically your revenue and profit based on some different scenarios. So as you can see here, we have units sold per year in the left-hand column, your revenue per year based on the units sold and the profit per year based on the uh, units sold. And then there's also a graph down here. So, you know, our first year average right now is about 12 units their first year. And then most dealers two to three X at their second year. So first year, you can probably expect to be somewhere around here. Years two, three, four, et cetera. You're going to be more in this range. Uh, this bottom tier here would be extremely exceptional, but that's there for you. And then the last thing is if you're really nerd now and want to know where all the numbers are derived. So all of the numbers that are derived on this flatbed add-on and price sheet here are calculated on this pricing calculation sheet, which is the third page down here on the bottom right. So basically for a base model, we factor in all the steel here, all the labor here, the powder coat and paint costs for the base model there, um, the miscellaneous stuff that you need, and then it basically generates your base price for the three different scenarios, whether you're cutting your own CNC parts in-house, you're outsourcing the cutting, or you're buying CNC parts from headquarters as a third price. And then basically we have a calculation for every ch upcharge after that, that it factors in material labor, any powder coat cost that goes into the upcharges. So full skirted, steel deck, that's how much extra it adds, Trex deck, duly added cost calculation, cabin chassis added cost calculation per three feet, Tacoma, subtraction, and then what your install cost is that basically factors in your labor and supplies for install, boxes, fenders, bed rails, cargo ears, D-rings, rub rails, gooseneck ball install, and then class five receiver for cabin chassis. So basically, if you're really into the numbers and wanna know exactly where these prices are derived, it takes your costs from the master cost sheet, it puts them into the pricing calculations and calculates each base price and add-on, and then it just lists it here for your convenience in the flatbed add-on prices, which is this middle page. So that's basically how the Excel sheet works. You guys feel free to fill it out. It's gonna generate your numbers, which will reflect reality in your market.